Today we're going to do notes 1.9. Uh, we will talk about a percentile and what that is. We will estimate percentiles and look at cumulative frequency graphs. And we'll also talk about a z-score. Okay, so some review from Algebra 1 there with these two. Uh, this might be a little new to you. Okay, so first of all, a percentile. When you guys take any standardized tests, say you take the SAT or the PSAT or something, you get something back that says you're in the 87th percentile. It gives you a score and tells you that score is in the 87th percentile. That means that you did better than 87% of the people. Okay, so if this is the worst and this is the best, you are at the 87th percent. Okay, there were 87% below you in your score. Now, if you finished at the 23rd percent, that means 20, you did better than 23% of the people. Okay, so that um, is what a percentile is. Okay, so to introduce this, I usually have people stand up along the back wall in my classroom by height, and then I ask a certain person, like, this is the shortest, and this is the tallest, and I say, okay, so you figure up, everyone figure up your percentile. So this person here is the first, two, three, four, five, sixth person, okay, out of 10. Okay, so they are the 6th out of 10, which makes them in the 60th percentile. Okay, so our percentile include is how many are below or equal to you compared to everyone else. Okay, so that is a percentile. So if we look at this example right here. Okay, so if somebody, if these are different test scores or whatever, if somebody had an 86, okay, what percentile would they be? Pause it and figure it out. Okay, so they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. They are 22nd out of 25, okay? And if you grab your calculator, 22 divided by 25 gives you the 88th percentile. Okay, so this score is in the 88th percentile. Okay, here's another one you can try. Okay, so once again, pause it and try A and B. Okay, so find the percent for Norman who scored a 72. So somebody that scored a 72 would be this person right here. So they are number two, okay? So number two out of the 25 people that are there. And if you take two divided by 25, they're in the eighth percentile, okay? Maria's test scores at the 48th percentile, and we wanna know what was her score. So did she get a 75, an 80, an 85, 90, whatever there. So the 48th percentile. So I want to know how many numbers in is the 48th percent. So 48th percent of 25 numbers is at the 12th number. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it looks like she scored a 70. Nine. Okay, so we're looking at that idea there too. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about. Okay, so we, as a cumulative frequency graph, um, let's say we have these U.S. presidents, 44 U.S. presidents who took office, and here's their age of when they were inaugurated, and this is the frequency of how often. So it looks like most of the time they're in their 50s, I think Biden and Trump are both in their 70s, which is kind of, well, kind of interesting. Um, okay, so here's what a cumulative relative frequency means, okay? So here's that same, same information here, and this is the relative frequency that we worked with already. You know, there were two out of the 44, and seven out of the 44 gives us a frequency of cumulative frequency, okay? The word cumulative just means that we're going to take 
and we're going to keep adding in. Okay, so if we start here, we're going to, okay, there were two here in this category, so that's four and a half percent. Now, cumulatively, we're going to mean we're going to add these two together. So when you add those two together, there'd be nine that were in this category or less. Here, cumulative, if we add these together, there's 22 that were here or less. So we have 22 there or less. The next one, there were 12 in this category, but this category or less, cumulative all the way up to here, where there were 34. All of these added together gives you 41 and 44. Okay, so when you get to the end, you should have 100% of your data accounted for. Now, if we turn these into frequencies, relative frequencies, percentages, okay, there were 2 out of the 44, 9 out of the 44, 22 out of the 44, gets up to the 50th percentile, etc. Okay, so we're going to use this data and plot these on a graph. Okay, here's what that graph would look like. So at, from 40 to 45, there were two. Okay, this is relative frequency, so we're looking at the percentiles. So we're looking at 4.5%, four four so 4.5% right here. 20.5%, okay? So you can see that it keeps adding in. So what this is and this is together is what this is, okay? Cumulative all together. And then adding more in and adding more in and adding more in until you get to 100% of your data, okay? So if we want to, let's say we want to make a box and whisker plot out of this, okay? This might help you understand it better, okay? So our lowest number was down around the 40s. Our highest number was up around the 70s. So we don't really know exactly what those numbers are, but we can figure up and estimate where these percentiles are, okay? Remember this was splitting, we first split it in half, right? So that would be at the 50th percentile. So if I want to know the 50th percentile, here's the percentages. 50th percentile would be 55, page 55. The we split that in half, so we get 25%, right? The 25th percentile would be about 49-ish. Okay, this would be the 75th percentile because we're putting them in quarters. So 75th percentile, roughly about there, be about 59 maybe. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea of what this means as you're going through. It's the cumulative adding everything in there. So this point here has all the data in between there. Okay, so if we look at this example here. Let's have you guys try this one. Okay, so part A was Barack Obama, who was inaugurated at age 47, unusually young. And then B, estimate and interpret the 65th percentile for the distribution. So you guys give that a try. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so part A at 47. Okay, 47 age. 47 is about here. So that's roughly about the 11th percentile. So he was pretty young, okay? There were about 11% percentile means that age or younger. So there were about 11% of US presidents who took office at his age or younger than him. So he was, he was fairly young, okay? Now, if I wanna know the 65th percentile, what age would that be? Okay, think about 65th percentile. Come over here, come on down here. I don't know, maybe about you know, 57, something like that there. Okay, so that's how you interpret your cumulative frequency. Okay, now the next one is finding z-scores. So here's how this is kind of used. Let's say that somebody takes the SAT test and another person takes the um, ACT test. There are two, two college entrance tests. Um, how does a university tell who scored better? So there's one spot left for, left 
for somebody to, to come into college? Should they accept this person or this person? So they have to decide how they compare to everyone else who took those tests. So if somebody, let's say the mean for the SAT is 1,000, I have no idea, I'm just making this up, and somebody scored a 1,200, and let's say the mean for this is a 25, and somebody scored a 20, 28, okay? So they both did better than the averages, right, if these are the means, but did they score a lot better, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to think about how many standard deviations they are away. So remember a standard deviation was kind of an average of how far they are from the mean, okay? So you'll see me draw this, this shape a lot. So if this is our mean, okay, and if we say this is one standard deviation away, above and below, and two standard deviations, and three standard deviations, okay? So remember, this number, the standard deviation is the, the number that we found the other day um, was an average of how far away from the mean the numbers are, okay? So these are your z-scores, okay? So if somebody, let's say, the average, um, let's go with IQ. The average IQ is 100 with a standard deviation of 10. So this would be at 110, 120, 130, 90, 80, and 70. So you take an IQ test and you get a 110, okay? That means that you scored one standard deviation above what everyone else scored, or the average, okay? If you scored a, an 80, that means you scored two standard deviations below what the average was. Okay, we're going to do a lot with this over this year, so please make sure you understand the z-score and ask about it if you're not quite sure. So the way we find the z-score is we can take our value, whatever the score is, minus the mean, and we're going to divide it by the standard deviation. So in this particular problem right here, if I say you scored 120, that would be the value here, minus the mean, which is 100, divided by the standard deviation, which is 10. So you can see 120 was two standard deviations above. And if I work this out, this would be 20 divided by 10, which is 2. So we can get two standard deviations above. Okay. That's the idea of finding a z-score. It's how, far, how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Okay. So if I have this data here, this is going back to the the scores we talked about earlier in the video, and this is some data with it. So we want to know, does Jenny's 87, 80, sorry, 86 fall within the distribution? So if we find her z-score, her value was an 86 minus the mean was an 80, and the standard deviation was a 6.07. So when you work that out, you get 1.99. So we can say that Jenny's test score is 0.99 standard deviations above the mean, above the average. Okay. Okay, so here, um, yeah, so like I said, we're going to do a lot with z-scores, this, and, and we'll get more in-depth with it applying percentages, percentiles to it, and stuff too. But here, I want you to try these three problems here. Um, so pause the video and try these three. Okay, so number one. Okay, North Dakota, medium household income is around 55, a little over 55. So about right here. So if I want to know the percentile roughly would be about about 75th okay so that's not an exact okay so we're it's all a you know roughly sort of idea okay estimate and interpret the first quartile so the first quartile would be the 25th percent right so at 25 percent would be roughly about right here which about 45,000 okay so $45,000, OK? 
Okay, so let's interpret this as well. So 25th percentile, we would say about 25% of the people in, it doesn't say what state it was, had an income of $45,000 or less. Sorry, my writing, I wrote too fast there, it's kind of sloppy, okay? But about 25% of the people had an income of 45000 or less, okay? Number three, find and interpret the Z-score for New Jersey, which has this median income, okay? So remember our Z-score is equal to our value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? So our value is 66,692 minus the mean, 51,742.44, divided by the standard deviation, 8210.642. Okay, so grab your calculator and work that out. Gives you a z-score of 1.82. So we can say that New Jersey is 1.82 standard deviations above the average. Okay, so if this was normally distributed, we would have a, a mean and average of 51.8. 51,700, whatever there, and the number, they're 1.8, so they're up here, so they're, they're pretty high, okay, uh, and that is what we did in 1.9, enjoy the practice.